everyone and welcome to the week 27 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend and we have a bunch of them. I'm Simon Borg. Let's start with the two penalty kicks in Philadelphia. The first one in favor of the Red Bulls came in the 35th minute and it's pretty cut and dry. Ethan White hooks his arm into Peggy Luyindala to impede his progress and Luyindala takes care of business himself scoring the first goal of the game. The second PK whistled by referee Alan Chapman was a little more dramatic because it came in second half stoppage time and it gave the union a chance to equalize. This one's interesting. In real time, it looks like a penalty. But when you look at the replay, you see that Ibrahim Sakagia gets a touch on the ball, and it's Pedro Ribeiro who continued his motion and kicked Sakagia, resulting in his tumble. So I say no penalty, but still a complicated one to rule on. What was easy? The finish by Sebastián Le Tue. He's always smooth on penalties. Next, we head to Houston, where referee Ricardo Salazar twice called penalty kicks in favor of the Columbus crew, only to reverse both of them. The first one came in the 22nd minute, when AJ Cochran looks to be holding the crew's Tyson wall on this set piece. I actually thought that was a PK, but Salazar has a chat with his AR and changes his mind. Then in the 82nd minute, Salazar whistles a handball in the box by Cochran, who immediately indicates he struck the ball with his head, and the replay says he's right. Salazar's other assistant lets him know, and the PK decision is again reversed. To the California Classico in San Jose we go, and there was no going back on his decision when referee Soin Stoika pointed to the spot after this handball in the box by Jason Hernandez. Too bad for LA, Robbie King can't take advantage. That could have made it 2-0 Galaxy, but instead it left the window open for the San Jose Earthquakes to equalize through Chris Wondolowski on a goal I felt might have been offside. Assistant Corey Rockwell has the better angle, but I get the sense from this replay that Wondolowski might be ahead of the line of Galaxy defenders when the shot comes off. Things got real chippy in this one in the second half. I felt LA's Omar Gonzalez could have received a second yellow for this arm to the back of the head on Atiba Harris, or perhaps second seconds later for this arm to the face again on Harris. There's no replay, but it looks like Gonzalez cocks his arm before whipping it backward. Now Harris had a little issue of his own in this game. Again, no replay here, but from a distance it looks like he's going in studs up on Bajo Hasidic. The ref had to chase Harris down to show him a yellow as he comes off for a sub, but I think it should have been red. Moving on to the Dallas-Vancouver clash where referee Ted Uncle had his hands full on several penalty appeals, all of which, by the way, Uncle declined. I agree with the ref on the 28th minute incident. It's the arm outside the penalty area that causes Sebastián Fernández to fall inside the area, but as we all know, it's not where you fall. Good decision to award the free kick outside the area. As was his decision in the 58th minute. No way this is a handball on Kendall Waston, who's surprised by the ball getting past his teammate, plus his arms tucked into his chest. Another shout for a penalty came in the 68th. Yes, there's a handball committed by Vancouver's Pedro Morales, but judging by the fact that his foot is on the line of the penalty area, it leads me to think that his arm has to be outside the box. Another close call for Uncle, but I think he gets it right with the free kick outside the box. The one I'm not with Uncle on is the stoppage time handball by Dallas defender Zach Lloyd. His arm is raised way up, and he uses it to block this header by Waston. It was the 92nd minute and it could have meant a potential equalizing penalty for the Whitecaps. But I'd also argue that Waston shouldn't even have been on the field for that play. Look at this high straight-legged studs up challenge on Victor Ulloa in the 29th minute. That's worthy of a straight red to me, and Waston gets away with a yellow. And there was another wild tackle from a Whitecaps player, this one in the 82nd minute. Ethan Sampson mimicking his teammate with an equally brutal challenge. The only difference? Sampson's lucky he doesn't make contact with the Dallas player. To Central Link Field, where playmaker Javier Morales played a pretty big role in the Seattle RSL match with a goal and an assist, but he was also involved in a questionable play in the 54th minute. Brad Evans slides in to clear a ball, and Morales comes down on his leg. Could he have avoided Evans? I think so, which is why Evans gets in his face. But my hunch is that Morales didn't appreciate the high leg from Evans. Watch the follow through. Two cynical plays by two veterans that I guess cancel each other out. Referee Kevin Stott looks the other way. There was a red card in this game and it came in the 68th minute to Nat Borchers, who doesn't even protest the card. Seattle's Obafemi Martins is breaking in on goal and the RSL defender does what he can to foil the attempt, denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. Easy red. Only one play to look at from Stump Up Center, where Sporting Kansas City got back to winning ways 4-0 over Chivas USA. It was already 3-zip in the 87th minute when Benny Failhaber sends this cross into the box to teammate Mikey Lopez, who hits the deck. From the sideline replay, it looks like Chivas defender Bobby Burling doesn't see him coming, but he still trips him up. Referee Juan Guzman opts against awarding the penalty. 
Montreal's Dilly Duca thought he deserved the penalty at Gillette Stadium in the eighth minute. Defender Andrew Farrell definitely clips him, but Duca stays on his feet to get a shot off, and referee Alan Kelly allows the play to continue. We've seen this before this year. You stay on your feet, you're not getting the call. The impact opened the scoring anyway through Callum Malice just six minutes later, but in my opinion, the play should have been halted dead after Jack McInerney trips up Farrell, who, to be fair, doesn't even protest. There was a red card shown to a Montreal player in this one, and it's Christoph Kroll. The first yellow comes for a hockey check, the second in the 64th minute for a foul from behind that was both late and reckless. Toronto goalkeeper Joe Bendick was late on this challenge in the box on Chicago's Grant Ward. Referee David Gantar rightly calls the penalty, but the fire can't capitalize. TFC felt they should have had a penalty of their own earlier in the game, just before halftime, when Dominic Oduro went down in the box twice on the same play. And I think that he was clipped both times, first by Gonzalo Segares and then by Bakari Sumare. But Gantar says play on. But as you probably already know, Toronto's biggest gripe came in second half stoppage time, when Gilberto pokes home what he thought was the game winner. Like everyone else, I also thought it was a good goal in real time. But after the match, Gantar says he disallowed the goal for a pushing foul by Gilberto on Sumare. And the more I watched it on replay, the more I think there was a foul. Right here, where Gilberto yanks down on Sumare's shoulder as he's going in for the poke. So I say good call by Gantar. The game finished 1-1. There was a goal called back at Dick's Sporting Goods Park as well. It's the 30th minute, and Portland's Fernando Adi thought he'd open the scoring, but it's a great call by assistant Eric Boria. Adi is in fact ahead of the ball on the headed pass. The match would finish in a two-all draw between the Rapids and Timbers, but the visitors claim the turning point was the penalty kick awarded to the Colorado Rapids after the break. Defender Liam Ridgewell is whistled for the handball in the box, but the replays show it came off his chest. Referee Drew Fisher points to the spot, and Dylan Powers buries the penalty. The Rapids wanted a second penalty in the 73rd minute, but Deshaun Brown goes down way too easy when he's challenged by Pa Ka. Good no call there by Fisher. The Timbers scored the last goal in this game to tie it up in the 76th minute, but the Rapids have a strong argument that the goal should not have stood. Gaston Fernandez looks like he committed a handball before continuing his run into the box and eventually scoring. The referee is right there, but doesn't call it. He also doesn't issue what I thought was a surefire red card in stoppage time. I say Nick LaBroca gets off way easy with a yellow card for this kamikaze tackle on former Chivas USA teammate Ben Zemanski. Studs into the knee. Absolutely brutal. Curious to know your thoughts on that play and all the others in the comment section below. Be sure to chime in. That's all we have for now. For our editor, Albert Lanzillo, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.